use this stuff in real life, um, it'll be easier for me to remember, more applicable. Uh, but as of right now, it's just get a lot of memorization. So when your low back arches, you need to know which ones are overactive and underactive. When the low back, low back rounds, I don't think there are any questions about that one. But if there are, you should know it. Arms falling forward. Um, if your feet turn out, if your knees move inward and move outward, you have to know all these. So um, I just tried to do the Hag's age thing, try to remember it. Or, I mean, honestly, I just got up during the test and was, you know, putting my knees in, putting my knees out, and just trying to think which ones are. Um, and I, got, I think I got a couple of those wrong. Um, you need to know the single leg squat assessment if the knees move inward. You know, overactive, adductor, TFL, underactive, gluteus, maximus, medius. Pushing assessment, uh, low, low back arches, you know, overactive is erector spinae, underactive is intrinsic core stabilizers. Shoulder elevation um, and your head protruding, you got to know over, overactive, underactive there. Pulling assessment, overactive, underactive when low back arches, shoulder elevation, head protrudes, got to know that. Gait assessment. There was one where it was like if the knees are moving inward and the feet are flat, what is it or something? That one threw me for a loop. Um, I that was the one I got up on and was thinking and was doing it, my knees inward and feet uh, flat, and tried to think what it was, but I couldn't figure it out. I kind of guessed. Um, let's see. Fitness professionals do not look over these. I mean, kind of look what's inside your scope of practice and just know that, you know, what you can't do is prescribe a, a diet, you know, tell somebody to start taking a medication, you know, easy stuff. Um, criteria for reassessment that was on there. Every four weeks or when major change happens, a uh, client is identifying new goals. The client has major lifestyle changes. Uh, you need to know this, the integrated uh, flex flexibility continuum and which part of the OPT model each one fits in. This would be stage one, stage two, and stage three. So um, know that. You got to know, oh, the self-SMR, uh, self-myofascial release is in all three. It's good to know. Uh, static stretching, hold for 30 seconds. That's a question on there. Easy one. 30 seconds. Um, you want to know the different types of um, resistance training systems. So that would be single set, multiple set, pyramid, super, uh, super set, circuit training, peripheral heart action, split routine. There was a question like there's a um, older man who doesn't have that much time or something. Not like to live, but older man that has doesn't have much time at the gym. And which, which uh, training system should he use? And I think it's a split routine just because you can... You know, just work on one part of the body and then come back another day and work on the, the other part. Um, I think that's the answer. Peripheral heart action, I think, was the one that I, I said just for the fact that he was older. And then I know that that one is good for uh, improving your circulation. So that one's probably something for, like, if you have coronary heart disease or hypertension or something like that or diabetes. It's just anything with poor circulation to help with that. Um, you know, there was another question, like, if someone has chore uh, coronary heart disease, what do you not let them do, or what do you let, what should they do, or something like that? I think in the book it says something like, "Don't let them lay down or sit down or something." Most of the stuff you want standing, just keep their circulation good. Um, resistance exercises stabilization tempo is four two one. Uh, that's a question on the test. What is the tempo for stabilization? Two o two for strength. And then explosive tempo for that one, but this is the one that you need to know. Four, two, one. Um, and then a lot, maybe, maybe just know. I mean, eventually you're gonna need to know um, the different stages, uh, exercises in each stage. So that's good to know. Not necessarily for the test, but you know, you need to know some of the basic terminology here and which what they which uh, stage they fall under, or uh, not stage, but. Um, call this phase of the OPT model uh, stage training you want to know the different stages um, you know this would be for the first uh, phase and then going up into the second phase 
and then eventually you, you know when you're in power mode uh, phase this one be you'd be here most of the time and then this would be used for resting and then in like strength phase or even beginning you know this is used for resting stage one and then the stage two is where you'd be using to work out um, and then when you would progress on this is good to know stages and phases look into that uh, drawing in maneuver versus bracing you want to know what that is uh, that's I mean if you can practice imagine like bracing would be if somebody's gonna you're like alright punch me um, I guess that's not a good example say you're doing a plank you know that's more of a bracing like you're contracting your low back your glutes everything your abs you're, you're contracting everything together versus the drawing in maneuver you're kind of not sucking in your stomach but flexing just your stabilizers and your core stabilizers so know the difference between those two um, plyometric training there's a couple questions about that amortization just the transition between eccentric loading and concentric unloading muscle actions during plyometric movements the faster the switch the amortization phase the more powerful the concentric action is I don't think that was on there but good to know there's a question it says like the ability to react and change body position with maximum rate of force production and it had like is that speed agility quickness or one other one or something and I chose agility but it's quickness so know that that one's on there quickness is ability to react and change body position with maximum rate of force production quickness um, the general adaptation syndrome how the body responds and adapts to stress in three stages the alarm reaction the resistance development and exhaustion so I remember that as gasser or gas air uh, that's like if you played sports and your coach you know was mad at you or something he'd make you run gassers go across the field and back one across the field and back two uh, those are gassers so GAS general adaptation syndrome air ARE so uh, I don't think this was on there the said principle uh, specific adaptation to impose demands just the body will specifically adapt to the type of demand placed on it um, mechanical specificity neuromuscular specificity and metabolic specificity M&M &M. so said principles M&M I said I want some M&Ms uh, let's see fit principle gotta know that frequency intensity time and type I never learned enjoyment until this one it was always just FITT classes growing up but um, I think that there's a question on here about the fit principle so know that um Body weight training, free weights, uh, strength training. Know the difference between that, you know, free weights versus body weights. Easy enough. Uh, overtraining. There was a question about overtraining, but it's pretty straightforward. Let's see. Um, oh, know the differences of, uh, you know, what certain clients are going to need, like if they're pregnant, if they're obese. If they're older, you know, no, 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 kind of look through that. It's good to know. Uh, hypertension training considerations. I think there might have been a question about intensity. Where, do, where should their intensity levels be if they have hypertension? I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, general warm up versus specific warm up. You know, a general warm up would just be. Um, it doesn't necessarily relate to the more uh, intense exercise to follow. Whereas a specific warm up would be. Uh, it's. Set, it's trying to mimic uh, the more intensive exercises that are following. I don't know if that was on there. There was a question about triple extension flexion. That's just when the knee, uh, when the hip, knee, and ankle are extended or flexed at the same time. So know that. The uh, different feedback, you know, getting external feedback from somebody, a personal trainer, an app, uh, a mirror, um, something where you can, you know, getting it from externally. Uh, whereas internal feedback would be the sensory information used to monitor uh, movement. So that would be this. Um, and, yeah, and the nervous system, sensory, that would be internal feedback. Uh, keep going here. Almost done. Active listening uh, versus, there was like some questions here where it's like, is it just a yes or a no question? Or is it, you know, that would be a close-ended question. You know, is it answer yes or no, or open-ended would be allow clients to give more information. That one was pretty easy because it said something like, um, you know, do you 
It had like three, four, four uh, answers, but three of them were the same, and then one was different, so it was that one. Smart goal, uh, know that, you know, I think there's like one, maybe two about that. Um, forms of support that you can give. I think there was a question about that. There was just some more general um, personal trainer uh, terminology that you got to know. Prompting, cueing, um, different approaches taking to certain people. There was a question that was like, how do you build rapport with your client? And it was like, write them a note, um, call them by their first name, work out with them, or one other one. And it didn't, it wasn't it either, like make it, write them a note or something. But um, I wrote work out with them because I thought just call them by their first name is a given, but I think that it was called them by their first name. Um, that's pretty much it. There's one more thing too. Uh, the marketing mix is what they call it in the book. And I didn't read that part in the book, unfortunately. But the four P's of marketing and the marketing mix, it's the same exact thing. They're gonna ask a question that's like, which one is a part of the marketing mix? And it was product, price, uh, place, a promotion. And it was like place or something. And I was just silly and I didn't do it because I thought the marketing mix was something else. But four P's of marketing, marketing mix, same thing. There's a question like, what is, if, if you know you're working out or you're you're working and you're at the front desk, you're not with a client or anything, and you're someone comes in. Um, what do you, you know, what is that called when you start talking to them or whatever? I still don't know. Um, it might be asking for the sale, prospecting. I don't know. That's just talking to people, you know, when they walk in, just talking to them. So, um, that's pretty much everything. And then you can go in and this is some more stuff. Like it shows you the blueprint of the exam here. So, um, there's not all that much about basic and applied sciences and nutritional concepts. Most of it is program design, ex exercise technique, um, and you know how to identify um, overactive, underactive muscles. You got to know a lot about that. So pretty much everything there. There's a lot more, but yeah, know the amount of sets, uh, reps, time in between for each stage of the OPT model. Uh, no uh, ATP production and oxidative, uh, the different energy systems. Um, I mean, there's all these videos online. Just look at other people making these videos. Mine's super long. Um, but I pretty much, I didn't go over everything at all, but there's some on there. Like, you know, I've, I watched a lot of these videos and I'm happy that I could pick up certain things from certain videos that really helped me out. And so I tried to just go through and write down and talk about you know some of them that were um, that I missed or that I know were on the test so either way you know good luck to you um, hope you fit or hope you pass it <laughs> uh, I failed mine I'm gonna go back and pass it um, it's pretty nice to, to to fail it though I mean even if you pass with 70 percent you know it's not very good so now hopefully I can get up into the 80s at least so uh, you know I'm gonna shoot for 90 percent this time I mean, shoot for 100, obviously, but, um, you know, there's some of them on there that are challenging because, like I said, there's, I think, multiple correct answers. So just really look at how they're wording the question. Um, how look, Think about how you think they want you to answer the question, I guess. Um, and then, you know, it's, I think there's plenty of time to take the test, too. Um, they're pretty strict. Make sure you have your CPR, AED certification when you go in. And, uh, I mean, don't sweat it too much. Uh, it's not that crazy. And it's not the end of the world if you fail, other than you have to pay more money to take it again, which sucks. But they're pretty lenient. They said that they'd hook me up with a little bit better of a deal. So I'm going to try to get that $20 price tag. Um, but I don't think that's going to work. But I need to get this certification. And then I'm going to move on and get the next uh, performance training certification eventually and uh, within the next couple of months. So, yeah, good luck, everybody. Hope you uh, pass. So, good luck.